Namaste. So today I had a realization. One of our viewers wrote in asking about Advaita and Neo-Advaita. And the poor guy is so confused. He's so spun. You know, he can't even put the question properly. And, you know, I feel really bad for the guy, but it would take like a three-hour conversation to straighten him out. And, you know, the best I can do is refer him to our earlier videos on the Upanishads and Advaita and all that stuff. And best of all, go and study them for yourself, you know. So anyway, this Neo-Advaita thing, how did it get started? Where did this story come from? Where did this philosophy originate? And today I had an interesting realization that it originated with the Vaishnavas. Now, let me, let me run the story down. The Neo-Advaita movement really started after the disappearance of Ramana Maharshi. And a fellow named Papaji came and he became like the successor, the next guy in the line, although not officially. There was no declaration by Ramana Ashraman. But they let it stand. They didn't challenge him. And of course, he went on to spawn other disciples teaching the same thing or something based on it or something. It's all rather vague. But where did he get the kind of skeletal, dumbed-down version of Shankaracharya's philosophy that he taught? Where did he get the idea? You know, he was not a deeply philosophical man. He was more of a person interested in leadership. You know, and so there's an apocryphal story that he met Ramana Maharshi at some point in his life. But the first time I knew of his existence was when he was in ISKCON. And this was just after the disappearance of Srila Prabhupada. Must have been 1978 to 1985 or something like that. Uh, he was in uh, Baroda Temple. And I happened to know, I happened to be friends with the president of the Baroda Temple at the time. And so I knew that, you know, he was in middle management, basically. And at some point, it must have occurred to him that because he was an ambitious man, he wanted a big position. And it must have occurred to him at some point that, oops, I missed because I came too late after Srila Prabhupada's disappearance. So it's very unlikely that I'll ever get into the GBC, the Governing Board Commission of ISKCON. And maybe he kind of started looking around for another group, uh, another Sangha. And, you know, if he knew, if he had known of Ramana Maharshi previously, maybe he took a look at that scene and realized that, oh, Ramana Ashramam never appointed anyone as a successor. So there's a power vacuum. And of course, you know, a, a leader type person, a, a political type person uh, never misses a good power vacuum or a good crisis either. <laughs> They're both perfect occasions for concentrating power. So anyway, he had been in the ISKCON movement long enough that he probably read some of the books by the previous Acharyas or even if not, doesn't really matter. But the origin of the philosophy that we know today as Neo-Advaita was actually in a commentary by one of the early Vaishnava Acharyas, Baladev Vidyabhusana, 
who wrote the Govinda Bhasya. And the Govinda Bhasya is, for all practical purposes, simply a refutation of Shankaracharya's Shariraka Bhasya on the Brahma Sutras. Now, the Vaishnavas are so terrified of even the word Brahman that they don't call the Brahma Sutras the Brahma Sutras, they call them Vedanta Sutras, and they lean heavily on the disciplic succession coming from Vyasa, which they claim to be part of. But Shankaracharya never made that claim. He only claimed to be a disciplic descendant of Govinda. And Govinda was his spiritual master's spiritual master. And he wrote really the first commentary, the Karika, on the Mandukya Upanishad that defined what later came to be known as Shankara's philosophy of Kevala Advaita, pure Advaita, unmixed. That's what Kevala means. So Kevala Advaita is the actual Advaita philosophy. And the Govinda Bhasya was written on every single page as a refutation of that. It's kind of like, how can I, I can't think of a positive example. <laughs> I can only think of the uh, Satanists. The Satanists, what is Satanism? It's just a complete inversion of Roman Catholicism. And it sprouted in the same, uh, from the same roots. It just inverted everything. For example, they would say the mass, the, the, the classic Latin mass, backwards. See, so any kind of an inversion, any kind of a negation like that simply affirms that which it negates. Try to understand. I remember back in the 1960s when there were all the protests against the Vietnam War. And uh, one of these new age gurus got up there. I forget which one it is. but And he said, you want to stop the Vietnam War? You really want to stop the Vietnam War? Just stop thinking about it. Don't even talk about it. Because every time you talk against it, you simply reaffirm its existence. You recreate it again. So just let it go. Just ignore it. You know, if you get called up for the draft, you just ignore it. Don't go. And if you're politically involved, don't discuss it. Don't talk about it. Make it like it doesn't even exist. And it won't. Because if nobody's interested in it, it will go away. That's the law of manifestation, right? <laughs> well, anyway, the Neo-Advaita philosophy appears in the commentary on Brahma Sutra, which they call Vedanta Sutra, in a disguised form, because on every page he's trying to negate it, he is actually glorifying it and saying, oh, this is the most important thing in the world not to believe in. <laughs> and so he actually winds up promoting it kind of in reverse, just like Satanism does with Catholicism. So he created what I call a straw man. A straw man argument is one of the nine logical fallacies. You can look it up. A straw man argument is when you construct a false image of the opponent's position, which is, by design, easily defeated by your philosophy. And then you mispromote it. I mean, you it's like misidentification or disinformation. You promote this straw man. Huh? If you can't beat the real man, you make a straw man, and <laughs> you can do whatever you like with it. So this is what Baladev did. He also did it for the Buddha. 
he created a version of Buddha's philosophy that, I mean, you know, I've read all the sutras, right? And, I mean, is just so outlandishly false. But it was easily defeated. And so, you know, after wiping the floor with the Buddhists, <laughs> straw man, he did the same thing to Shankara, except he did it on every single page, not just one section like he did with the Buddha. He created a phony version of Shankara's philosophy and then defeated that. Now, I don't know if Papa G was enough of a scholar to have gone back and read Baladev, uh, especially since the original is in Bengali, I think, or, or Sanskrit, whatever. He probably heard it, though, because all the Vaishnavacharyas since then have echoed the same arguments. Baladev's, <clears throat> excuse me, Baladev's commentary is the source for all the Vaishnava arguments against Shankara, but not the real Shankara, the straw man Shankara. So this is what Papaji knew about Shankara's philosophy, not the real Shankara philosophy, but the straw man philosophy that he learned while he was in ISKCON. And he started teaching that I mean, yeah, maybe he did a little reading of Ramana's books and stuff like that. And he used Ramana's catchphrases, like, who are you, and stuff like that, to promote what is essentially a straw man argument against the actual Advaita philosophy. And this became Neo-Advaita. So I don't want to promote Neo-Advaita by quoting its bad arguments. But there's a link in the description of the video to a deep study that I did in 2010-2011 on Baladev's commentary. And if you go through it, you can see, I mean, literally, hundreds, if not thousands, of quotes that simply invert what he thinks is Shankara's philosophy. But of course, it's not actually Shankara's philosophy, which you can also study directly. I've also put a link to Shankara's commentary on the Brahma Sutra. So you should do what I did and compare them side by side, sutra by sutra, verse by verse, adhikarana by adhikarana and see how they twist the Shankara's original philosophy into a, a weak, uh, fragile, easily defeated uh, caricature of itself. And so this is where the whole Neo-Advaita story started, historically. And, you know, I haven't looked up all the sources exhaustively. I can't provide you with a list of quotes but I could, if anybody wants to take this further. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.